Nobody would like to tune their instrument after the concert. That would not be smart. The best thing is to tune the instrument before you go into the concert. Why I'm saying this, before you begin your day, it's always good to ensure that you have the needed strength. And that strength, to get that strength, what you have to do is quiet time. And now how we have to do that quiet time, that's what we are going to discuss today. For that, I want to anchor upon one verse, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. That says, when, when it was very early, it, when it was still dark, Jesus went into a solitude and spent time in prayer. In that, we are going to have two answers. Number one, when, and number two, why. When it was too early, when it was still dark, Jesus was willing to have time with his Father. Before the day begins, before there may be any distraction, you need to spend time with God. That clearly tells that you are preparing yourself for the day. And the second one is he went into a solitude where, where there is no distraction. Well, some of us live in hostels, some of us live in homes where we don't have a room of our own. What I would suggest is this, you get up before anybody else and you finish your time with God before you are distracted, before there are any disturbances. That clearly answers when you need to do your quiet time and where you need to do your quiet time. But now, how we have to do the quiet time, that's what we are going to look at it. When you're doing your quiet time, probably you have to become a student. As a student, you need to study the Word of God. A lot of people use different resources, tools to have their quiet time. There is nothing wrong in it. But the best is to read the Bible straight. For that, what I would suggest is this. Choose a book, probably John's Gospel or Epistle of John. Take that book and finish that book over a period of time. For that, what you can do is this. You can study one paragraph if it has five to six verses or if it is a small one, take two paragraphs. But never try to read half a paragraph or begin from half a paragraph because each paragraph will have one concept. So when you're doing your quiet time, finish one concept. So read it several times and ask the five questions I'm going to teach you today. For that, I would like to take an example so that you can easily understand. All of us know this verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but should have everlasting life. To this passage, I'm going to ask five questions. Question number one, what does this passage say uh, about God? About God means it can be God the Father or God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. When I look into it, quickly I can give you two answers. Number one, God the Father loves the world. Number two, God the Father gave His Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Quickly, two sentences I can make. Like that, you can have several sentences. But from these two sentences, we have two kinds of answers. Number one, it can tell you about God, the nature of God, who He is. He is love. That's His nature. The second one is what He did. He gave His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, based on what He is, we worship Him. Based on what He did, we thank Him. That's question number one. And question number two, what does it say about human beings, about you and me? Quickly looking, I can give you two answers. Number one, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if, you, if any human being believes in Jesus Christ, he will have eternal life. If he doesn't, he will be perishing forever. So in that way, regarding human beings also, there will be two kinds of answers. Number one, good human beings. Number two, bad one. If you have the same character as that of a good one, praise the Lord. If you don't, you need to be very careful and change wherever is necessary. That's the second question. And the third one, is there any sin in this? Now, people perish. Why? Because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Not to believe in Jesus Christ is sin. Now, what you have to do? If that sin is in you, you need to confess and you need to change. That's the third one. Fourth one, is there any promise in this? Definitely, eternal life. But let me tell you one thing. Most of the promises in the Bible, they do have a condition. The condition is if you believe in Jesus Christ. So what should you do? You have to claim the promise by fulfilling the condition. That's the fourth one. Fifth one, is there any commandment in this? Well, in this verse, there is no commandment. If there is no commandment, don't try to 
cook up one thing. There is no need. So these are the five questions you ask. And based on the five questions, you have your responses. That's your prayer time. So you study the word of God and you respond to the word of God through prayer. And that is how you do your quiet time. And when you have this word of God inside you, Psalm 119 verse 11 says like this, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin. That's amazing. You will have strength to live powerfully in this world. May God help you to live powerful life.